Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and I'm glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Payam Shakuri. He's a nephrologist, and he's going to be talking about uncontrolled gout and its connection to chronic kidney disease. Welcome to the program, Dr. Shakuri. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Now, you're a nephrologist. Uh, a bit of your background, where is it that you, uh, you're practicing? And uh, let's talk a little bit about gout. Absolutely. Yes, I am a nephrologist. Uh, as, uh, I deal with uh, kidney disease primarily and chronic setting and, and hospital setting. Uh, and uh, I practice in Hudson Valley, New York. What exactly is gout and how is it connected to kidney disease? Okay, so basically gout is when you have excess of uric acid circulating all around your body. Mm-hmm. And what is uric acid? Uric acid is uh, is a waste product, is a, is a byproduct of one of the millions of cycles in our body. We use uh, this thing that we use purine metabolism to repair our DNA. We're, we're generating, discarding DNA every day. And we do that by using the nutrition that we take and converting it into different strands of DNA. Um, uric acid is a waste product of that pathway and that metabolism. Uh, usually we get rid of it. Uh, we could uh, urinate it out or just mm-hmm. pee it out. Mm-hmm. But on, as our diet has changed throughout the history and our kidney functions are uh, have worsened with certain diseases, uh, obesity, diabetes, uh, we can't get rid of the uric acid as efficiently as we should. So what happens, uric acid, it just accumulates in our body and make us sick. So if I'm understanding correctly, getting rid of this uh, uric acid is something that is natural and normal for us without all of the the chemicals, uh, different types of processed foods and lifestyle that we are currently living. If it weren't for that, we would still be getting rid of our uric acid naturally. Yes, but um, the the times have changed. Our diet has changed. Um, And there's a lot of kidney disease. Mm -hmm. That's why we're not getting rid of uric acid uh, as well as we did in the past. So in essentially, the answer to your question is yes. So how do we know that our uric acid is, is building up to a point where we can't uh, tolerate it or not uh, being disposed of properly? How, when do you, what is a sign? So this is the thing, our understanding of uh, uric acid is completely changing. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, um, we knew that we have a problem with uric acid when we started getting... Uh, pain in our joints, uh, historically in the big toe. Uh, this used to be the disease of the rich in the uh, European monarchy. They used to get a lot of gout. Um, so they would know that by extreme joint disease, uh, painful joints, big toe, knees, hands, um, and this also manifests uh, nowadays, you see that in people too. What has changed is that we know that we can feel and see the joint disease, but at the same time, we know that this is happening all over your body, including your heart. So how you would know about it, you usually get a joint disease, It's um, and then you go to your physician, and they would, along with other things, they will check your uric acid level. And if your uric acid level is above six, then that raises the suspicion that you're having problem excreting or getting rid of the uric acid uh, and you might be having gout. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's joint disease, joint pain, and then you see your doctor and they check your uric acid level. Mm -hmm. That's how you make the diagnosis. And normally, is is there a treatment, or is this something that just has to be managed? Is there, can you get rid of the, of gout? Well, we we used to think that if um, if we really uh, 
control our diets, there are certain foods that are rich in uric acid. Mm -hmm. We used to think that by diet alone, we can control this, but our understanding has changed so much that uh, we now know there is a lot more in play than simply diet. And mm -hmm. Uh, we see that the diet might help with the symptoms, but there is a lot of other things in play, including the genetics, the internal makeup of a person, how they get rid of the uric acid, how they reabsorb it. And uh, um, we know diet alone, even though it might help, is it, it does not treat it. So in the past, we've used medications to try and get rid of the gout. And some of these medications are, uh, are quite uh, effective um, uh, and they do help, but in, in a lot of instances, the medications uh, cannot fully control gout. And despite being on medications such as allopurinol or febixostat, the patients continue to get these, what we call gout flares, which is the periodic uh, painful joints that can be very debilitating. Uh, so yeah, we do have options uh, and they do work, uh, but not all the time. Now the treatment uh, that you do, these, these drugs for, for gout, uh, do they exacerbate kidney disease? Um, can you treat the kidney disease without treating the gout or vice versa? Or once you have the one, they're connected and they have to be treated together, even though the treatment may cause one or the other to be worse. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So this is the, this is the problem with gout. Um, once uric acid accumulates, we know, um, high uric acid can hurt the kidneys and vice versa. So as your kidney function goes down, you actually are unable, your body is unable to get rid of the uric acid. And that causes more uric acid to stay in your body and stay in your joints, stay in your uh, heart and cause more harm and vice versa. So, the kidney disease worsens gout and the gout worsens the kidney disease. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a vicious cycle. Uh, the, the, the treatments, uh, the, the two treatments that I mentioned, um, uh, they could, uh, they are, they work, but not all the time. You could, you could have that. You could, have, you could have a patient on, uh, these medications and still get uh, attacks and when not have it fully controlled. Yeah, there are a couple problems uh, with one of the medications. I don't know if I can talk in details about that. For instance, uh, for Bixostat, it's now FDA has a black box warning on it about it might worsen uh, worsen the cardiac disease and heart disease. So now that was one of the weapons that we had, but now everybody's skeptical about it. And when, when this black box warning comes up and patients, especially the ones with history of heart disease, they feel uneasy uh, starting it. Um, and uh, allopurinol itself, uh, the problem with allopurinol is if there is kidney disease, you really shouldn't use the full dose allopurinol. You have to lower your dose of allopurinol and that would, in turn, it just makes your treatment it's a lot less efficient. You cannot have a regular dose allopurinol if there's kidney disease. That could hurt your kidneys. And you that know, can cause toxicity of allopurinol. You know, with March uh, being uh, Kidney Disease Awareness Month, uh, where can our listeners get some more uh, information about uh, kidney disease, about how it uh, is related to gout? Where can our listeners get some more information online? The National Kidney Foundation has good information about gout. Also, you could find some more information on uh, therenalproblem.com uh, about gout, especially for physicians uh, and healthcare professionals, 
there's some more information uh, on this website as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on the uh, program this morning. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Payam Shakuri. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen and download at SoundCloud and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.